hello everyone uh, my name is uh, krishna so i come from uh, intel so i uh, just a brief intro about myself so i work on uh, the intel uh, uh, machine learning and embedded tools team so we have for you today uh, this uh, new toolkit called open vino from intel so anybody has uh, heard about this or any idea about this uh, okay so uh, so today i actually will introduce you to this tool and also i have some some uh, demo here for you today so we have a uh, uh, couple of object detection samples which i have made ready using open vino so i'll show you once we go go through the flow i'll just then show you like how it's actually put into practice by running a couple of models and it's a good thing about this tool is it's free so you can uh, download this from the intel website and try it out on your own as well so this basic outcome of this would be to get a good idea of what this tool is and the uh, and the way you get you can get started by running some of the inference samples so what uh, open vino is so basically uh, we uh, know about classical uh, cv application so most of the people would be familiar with open cv and stuff but intel now wanted to put some extra machine learning capabilities into this uh, especially at uh, the edge computation so uh, open vino is a tool which is used mainly for uh, 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 computer vision applications at the edge so you the typical use case is you have a trained model uh, so assume you want to do some object detection and you have a trained model uh, usually the you will train it uh, in a separate uh, uh, manner and once you have the trained model you take that as the prerequisite for open vino and deploy it in some kind of a edge device like this so this is an intel nuc and also we have a moedius compute stick here which i have plugged into the usb3 uh, slot so this uh, is like you can think this one as a typical edge device and it can be used to run inference on the edge continuously and you don't have to send your uh, video stream or uh, like images to a server for doing inference so this is one uh, one typical use case of this uh, maybe we'll see some more details on how it works in the coming point so this is just some of the benefits you can get by using open vino so uh, at the very low level so it uses most of the highly optimized intel libraries like uh, the math kernel library and such uh, uh, like uh, every year intel has like this new platforms coming up so these libraries take advantage of the new uh, architecture uh, of intel and help you accelerate the performance also you have the deep learning convolutional uh, neural network based uh, uh, deep learning solutions incorporated into this as well <coughs> excuse me so what uh, open vino has within so you have uh, there are two broad aspects to open vino so one on the left side you can see the dldt it's called the deep learning deployment toolkit and the, the second half of it is the traditional computer vision uh, previously this was called cv sdk computer vision sdk but uh, it's been rebranded as open vino to include the uh, the the whole uh, uh, tool chain so you see there is a model optimizer inference engine on the uh, deep learning deployment toolkit we'll see how it works in the next file and on the classical side we have uh, optimized open cv open vx libraries and also media sdk for encode decode applications the open cl drivers are used for heterogeneous computing just for example you see there is a cpu here which is i7 you have a moedius uh, compute stick which uses a vpu and you don't have to do uh, like uh, recode for each of these hardware so one set of you code it once and deploy on multiple hardware using some plugins which are built into open vino so in the demo i will show you how you can use those plugins So this is just a file to show what are the target platforms which we support. So most of the current generation <coughs> CPUs, sixth generation to eighth generation, this, uh, this uh, Open Vino supports. Uh, the code name is Skylake. So Skylake onwards, uh, most of the Intel CPU and uh, graphics uh, we have support for uh, Open Vino, and it supports most of the common OSs, Ubuntu, Windows, uh, CentOS. So today I'll be demonstrating on Ubuntu 16.4 LTS version. And there are some uh, prerequisites like Python 3.4 and OpenCV, which you need to install before installing OpenVINO. Of course, when you are installing OpenVINO, it will uh, show you what are the prerequisites or dependencies, so that you can. Uh, so this is like a uh, this you can get it on the first page of OpenVINO downloads download the uh, website as well. So we will see a typical workflow. I think this is the one of the most interesting uh, part to the OpenVINO. So we have seen that the first. Uh, part in the open vino uh, block diagram also dldt deep learning deployment toolkit this part is actually a like more uh, uh, detailed version of what is inside the dldt so these are the standard frameworks which uh, is supported in open vino so we have uh, 
Cafe, TensorFlow, MXNet, and recently Kalji was also added. So the training happens on these uh, frameworks, typically in a high compute uh, server environment. And then you use the trained models. So if, for example, the Cafe model and Prototext, if you have it, you use it as an input to the model optimizer. The model optimizer will convert this trained model into an intermediate format, which is uh, used by the inference engine. Intermediate uh, format is a set of two files. It is an XML file and a bin file. The XML file will have all the topology related information. The bins, bin file will contain the weights and biases. So this is fed to the inference engine, which is a common API, which can be used to execute your inference on CPU, GPU, FPGA, and the Movidia stick. Also, there is the Gaussian uh, uh, Neural Network Accelerator as well, which is used mainly for speech processing task. It's a recent addition to OpenVINO. Uh, but these are the four standard plugins we support. And the GPU here is the integrated, Intel integrated GPU, uh, which is a part of the CPU die itself. Yeah. Yeah, so basically what is done is in model optimizer, you take a, a, a train model basically. So, but not all layers of the train model is used for inference. And uh, say if only the forward pass is used, no, we don't require a backward pass and most of the layers are not required. So it has intelligence built in to remove such layers so that the performance is optimized. So only the ne layers necessary for inference are actually kept and that can be, it's an offline activity. You don't have to do it live. So you can do it separately in some environment, maybe in the same environment where you have done the training. Only send the XML and bin file. It also takes less memory as well. It's a one-time activity put it on an edge device like this. And then your uh, inference runs here directly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly doing the training. So you, uh, the first step is a training. Separately training happens on uh, say. Uh, you mean the training happens as a separate activity or uh, which, uh, and that's the input which is fed to the model optimizer. This doesn't, inference only, yes. And uh, uh, if you have a set of, uh, say, Pascal VOC data set or some data set which you want for, say, object detection, so you train it on your framework of your choice, maybe CAFE or TensorFlow. Uh, and then whatever output of such models, like deploy a prototext, you get the prototext and model file, right? That you take as input and then feed it to the model optimizer. It's a Python based tool. So you just uh, run this Python code on and give the argument as your trained model. You just have to give the path to your uh, uh, cafe model. It will then output the XML and bin file. So that you take for further inference. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you need to freeze it. So you need uh, to freeze the TensorFlow model. And then you can feed it as input to open me now. In CAFE, uh, we actually, I, the samples I have is based on CAFE. So I recently did AlexNet as well, the AlexNet BVLC. We just have to directly uh, input the CAFE models. But for TensorFlow, you need to do the freezing, freezing step before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in that, actually that's a separate uh, thing actually, so training part. So usually we recommend Xeon line of processors for that and you can use Intel optimized cafe, Intel optimized TensorFlow. And we also have an Intel version of Python as well. So these, like instead of taking a standard available version of CAFE, you can actually choose the, uh, like go to the Git, actually it's open source. You can just type Intel version of CAFE. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, it, it depends on your custom layers. Basically, uh, we have uh, in this, if you download the mod, uh, Open Vino Toolkit, right, we have a, a documentation inside, detailed documentation. It will give you what are the layers in CAFE, what are the layers in TensorFlow, if it's supported. And if your uh, custom layer ha uses the same, uh, uh, like uh, whatever is listed, uh, which is supported, then it's okay. But if it is something new, then Open Vino treat it as something which is new for it, and then it has to be done separately. Uh, yes, but it depends on whatever is supported. So, if uh, whatever you have is supported in this open window already, it has a detailed list of what are the operations or what are the uh, internal operations it supports. Uh, and if, it, if your custom layer also supports that, then it, it's directly supported. Or else, we, it's a long step. We need to uh, do some extra work on that. I can show uh, an example now. So, maybe uh, in interest of time. So, we will just. Uh, We just connect it to this. So once you install, uh, this is the Ubuntu 16.4 LTS system. So once you install, uh, uh, installing OpenVINO is very straightforward. So you just have to download it from the Intel website. You will get a, a tar file. You just unzip it and uh, run the script. So it will uh, take this as the default directory in uh, opt Intel. So you will have a folder like this, computer vision SDK with some version number. So I'm using 2018 R2 version. And it's a very, uh, these tools keep getting updated regularly. So you can expect another two or three more uh, uh, versions to be coming up soon. And the latest version can be found on the website. And you get a lot of internal uh, directories like this. So you have uh, deployment tools, samples, and there is a directory called deployment tools. This is related to the DLDT. And we have the different models which are already uh, pre-trained on networks like uh, CAFE and TensorFlow. And you have the XML and bin file ready in FP16 and 32 format. So you just have to use this and get started with your uh, inference. So this is the, uh, some of these are some of the samples which we have. So I will uh, just run just to give an example. I will just run uh, one uh, example of a face detection. Uh, quickly explain you what does this mean. So we have this interactive face detection sample as the first argument, and then minus m option stands for the path to the model file. And here the model is not related to any of the cafe or TensorFlow. It's just the uh, IR format because once you convert the model optimizer, it's all XML and bin file for the inference engine. So if you see here, it points to a uh, FP32 model, which is the face detection ADAS dot XML, and then minus I is the input. So where does it get input from? It can work on an image, it can work on a video, or it can even work on a stream coming from a webcam. So uh, we have tried all the three. So I'll just show an example on a video. Yeah, so you can see here it's a face detection, so it uh, has only one label, and most of the you can see on top the uh, the inference time and FPS as well. So we can see most of the oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's uh, getting close to. See, this is a kind of very powerful processor, i7, uh, so it can get up to I think 40, 50 FPS. But we have tried the same on a low end up squared board also, and we can get up to 15 to 20 FPS on that. So, and this is how we actually, it's quite straightforward. So, you just need to know uh, which are the options. And now, the interesting part. So, uh, if we want to use, uh, by default, if you don't do anything, the inference engine uses CPU. But there is an option to tell OpenVINO to run this inference on GPU as well. And the way we do it is we give an option called minus D, stands for device, and then we put GPU, and then execute, and you see the uh, plugins are different. So it's, if it's CPU, it loads MKL DNN plugin. So now this is happening on a GPU, and uh, if we want to see the layer by layer information as well, we can do that. But uh, this is one option which we get, and it's you don't have to redo any code code here. Write one code. And you can leverage all the different hardware using the same code. Just we need to know what are the plugins to be loaded. Uh, I'll just execute it again. And by GPU here, I mean it's the in Intel integrated GPU, so which is a part of the same CPU die. So it's coming up, uh, coming close to I think 40, 44, 45 FPS. 
and the other option is this Movidius stick. So, this Movidius stick is a USB form factor. So, it, if you can see here, I am just uh, showing it here. So, it just fits into one of your USB 3 uh, slots. It just needs a USB 3 slot. Also, it has a PCIe based uh, variant also, but for now, we just have the USB 3 uh, Movidius stick. And if we want to use Movidius, it supports 16, F, uh, 16 uh, FP model. It does not support the 32 FP. So, I can maybe run one on, on this now. I have just tried it a little while ago. So, yeah. So, it is a different uh, model. So, it is a security barrier uh, which uses three three models. So, one to detect and detect the vehicle and then to detect the number plate and what is written on the number plate. So, it uses three models in series and all these are inputs. Again, the same format. It looks long because there are three inputs to be fed, but uh, it is all the same. Minus I stands for input and then we uh, give the XML file here. So, once I click and we have sudo so. So, you can see loading plugin Myriad. So, it stands for the VPU. And you can see here that uh, in this image, it can detect uh, the vehicle and the color of the vehicle as well, which is written here in white. So, it is little uh, not visible, I think. So, it is written, it is black car. So, it can detect the car and also the color as well as uh, the number plate here. And the FPS, I think, is it is very high. So, there are three models here. So, and the, the metrics are given for each of these models here. So, this is uh, on uh, Myriad and if we want to uh, have more in depth uh, like uh, metrics, we can have another option called performance count PC and which will give you even the layer by layer information as well on what layer is executing where. Uh, so, maybe you can see it here. Yeah. So, there are many options supported by Open Mino. So, I think uh, uh, it is a free tool. So, once you start uh, using it, uh, I will encounter a lot of such options and it has very detailed documentation in this folder here. So, if you see uh, this, there is a folder which has very detailed documentation for each of the models used and how you can play around with different options internally. Yes, it supports Windows, CentOS yeah, and Linux. Yeah. In Windows, it is quite similar, everything is similar. Uh, just you instead of the script, you will have an exe file. It is all similar, the folder structure is similar, yes. Uh, like, okay, only if, if you want to uh, modify some layers of it. Uh, yeah, actually, that is possible, but it uh, is on a case to case basis. It is a little elaborate, it is not straightforward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, again, it depends, right? Like because uh, we had uh, uh, like uh, last two couple of weeks back, we had interactions with uh, some customers who were okay with 10 FPS. So it was their requirement, and uh, all their main problem was they could not connect every time because their deployment was in a rural place. So the internet connectivity is very patchy, and getting back and forth data between the server and the uh, like um, node was very difficult. In such cases, for them, FPS was kind of a compromisable factor, but they needed this uh, edge cap capability. So, they could train this uh, uh, like model separately, just transfer the XML and bin file to this edge device and run locally the inference and only transfer whatever important data you need to the server for further analytics. No, uh, whenever you give the image, so automatically it uh, downscales it before uh, feeding it to the inference engine. Uh, uh, this object detection SSD model. Yeah, SSD. Yeah. Okay, I think I need to check that. So maybe. Yes, you can try 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 it out. So. It, uh, video, I am not sure, uh, you can, it is there, okay, but we, we can send it to you if you want. So, we have some sample uh, data sets, we can send it to you, so, yeah, so, sure, yeah. Yep. Thanks, yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay,